Thank you, thank you, Marco. We are a real Italian connection now. Thank you to uh, the Neo Biotech and particularly to the GAO committee for the kind invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in this beautiful town of Istanbul and sharing my knowledge with you. I have uh, the possibility now to show you how it's possible to master any time loading in the sinus area. And uh, first of all, I would like uh, uh, to say that uh, <coughs> the transition is not working. Use this. OK, now it's working. First of all, I would like to say that, uh, as you have already seen with uh, Marco lecture, in Italy, any time loadings means 99% of the time immediate function, because the patient wants to came in the office with uh, his own tooth and uh, to go out from the office uh, with a new tooth. And this is a great problem, especially if we are managing with the maxillary sinus uh, area, because you know that uh, probably this area is uh, the worst area of the oral cavity to insert the implant, in terms of bone quantity, bone quality, and also for the position. I know that now you are uh, probably all familiar with uh, CMI concept, and I suggest you to chart every time which kind of fixation you reach in every clinical situation, because not always the surgeon and the prostodontist are the same doctor. In our case, me and Marco, we are uh, su surgeon and a prostodontist, but sometimes we have different figures. So the prostodontist must know which kind of fixation the oral surgeon has reached. So please remember, chart every time which kind of fixation you have reached. Speaking about the sinus area, I obviously have to refer to the book of Dr. O that was published 10 years ago, more or less about the minimal invasive sinus surgery where he clearly explain that we can have four different clinical situations. And now we will go deeper inside every clinical situation to understand how we can reach an optimum CMI, if it's possible, fixation. So let's see sinus class one. <clears throat> In sinus class one is the situation where we have at least 10 millimeter or, or more remaining bone. So it seems to be a very easy situation to be treated, but this is not true, and I will show you why. But uh, if you have the possibility, you have to treat the patient or with uh, an immediate post-abstractive restoration. So in the case of uh, this lady, we had to extract the first premolar due to a root fracture. So we extract the tooth and we insert in a provisional restoration, uh, inserting the implant without any contact with the sinus. We had enough bone to do this. And after six months, after one year, when you think that uh, uh, the healing of the soft tissue is good, you can finish your case with a final restoration. But as I told you before, this situation sometimes, uh, sinus class one, it is not so easy to be treated with an immediate uh, implant, with an immediate restoration. Why? Because it's very common to find challenging situation in this area where we have uh, D44 bone quality or D244 bone quality. So we must keep in mind some suggestion that we have to use in this situation. And the worst situation is when you have D44. 
In this situation, probably it's better to do a delayed loading, to submerge the implant and not to perform uh, an immediate loading. In the other situation, when you have D244, you can choose a longer implant, you can use, as you have already seen, an undersizing drilling and a self-compaction, you must use a tapered apex implant like ES2, ES3 uh, implant, and with D1 and or D2 bone in the crestal area, you have always to be gentle, you have always to widen the crest with a cortical burr. And this is very important, last but not least, do not try to touch the inferior part, the inferior board of the sinus. Stay away from it, because if you try to touch, you have a possibility to reach a very low stability. So, as I told you before, this is not a so uh, easy situation to treat with immediate loading, with any time loading. And this was, no volume please. <laughs> and uh, for example, this uh, premolar uh, must be inserted into the, uh, into, uh, the mm, premolar area, which is already healed, and we have D44 bone, so a very bad quality of bone. Now let's move to sinus class 2, CMI fixation. This is uh, um, a better situation for the immediate loading, for the anytime loading, because you can engage the apex of the implant into the inferior part of the wall of the sinus. This is very important, especially, as I, as I told you, for the immediate loading. But how can we get, how can we reach the inferior part uh, of the sinus, of the cortical wall of the sinus? Once upon a time, we were used to do this with the osteotome. In 1994, uh, Summers introduced his technique but uh, this technique is not uh, <clears throat> so predictable. And I really don't like this technique because it's a malleting techni technique. All the patients hate uh, this kind of procedure. But uh, the most important thing is uh, that you create a fracture in the uh, sinus floor, but you cannot control the dimension of this fracture. So this fracture mm, might be uh, bigger than the apex of the implant. So you will not get any stability for the apical part of the implant. So it's a situation where sometimes you need to submerge everything and you are not able to perform uh, an immediate loading and any time loading. Fortunately, more than 10 years ago, Dr. O introduced uh, the S uh, reamer, which is the most important actor of this surgery. This kind of uh, burr is not able to damage the sinus membrane, but is able to create a controlled fracture in the inferior part of uh, the sinus. And by doing this, you can insert the implant with a very, in a very gentle way, and you can obtain a real CMI fixation. So this is very, very important. So in uh, <clears throat> 2014, I performed my sinus class two CMI fixation, and I insert uh, this implant in the uh, premolar, second premolar, uh, left, uh, right area, and I fixed a kneeling screw over the implant. This was the situation on your left just after the surgery and after three months of, lee, of healing, so no immediate restoration at that time, no uh, any time loading, but conventional loading. So this was uh, the situation just after the loading, and here, ladies and gentlemen, 
January 2024, an X-ray of control, and you can see that everything is stable from a radiological point of view and also from a clinical point of view. So <clears throat> from these cases, I understood that it is very important to have uh, uh, stability in the apex of the implant and that we can perform immediate post-extractive implant by uh, this kind of procedure. In the meantime, the GAO uh, published in 2016 this very important study about 2,284 implants that were inserted in a period of uh, eight years of uh, control and loading. And what did they found in this uh, study? They found a very good uh, success, rate, success rate for the conventional loading, for the early loading, but also for the immediate loading, 98.7%. So <clears throat> I was convinced that I can perform immediate loading in sinus class 2 CM high fixation. So this was one of the first cases that I did. I needed to replace this second premolar due to a root fracture. There is a fistula also in this area. So I yeah, struck the tooth, insert the provisional. The provisional has only um, has no contact in occlusion, so it's uh, only a function. But the patient is very happy when you do this because he is able to go out from your office with a new tooth. So <clears throat> after six months, uh, the final restoration. But once you get more confident with this kind of procedure, you will be able to treat more complex cases as uh, this one, for example. Another one second premolar, which was a fracture due to the presence of a, a metal post into the root. So I had to extract the root. I had to regenerate a little bit. In this case, it's not a real CMI fixation because we have a only a partial fixation in the coronal region, partial fixation in the middle part of the implant, but we, have, we had an apical fixation because the apex of the implant was inserted into the sinus and uh, against the inferior cortical wall of the sinus. So this was the healing after six months, soft tissue healing, and this, is, this was the final restoration, 2016, and this is control after eight years, and the patient had the need to insert another implant in the molar area, and this is a case of sinus class three CM fixation. So this case can uh, permit me to introduce the sinus class three CM fixation is the situation where we have only uh, three to seven millimeter of bone left. So we cannot have a fixation in the apical part of the implant. We have fixation only in the coronal part and in the middle part of, of a implant. Once again, I show you my first case, 2014. In this case, we have more or less four millimeter of a residual alveolar crest bone. So I insert the, the implant, I increase the volume of a soft tissue, but at that time, 10 years ago, I proceed with a delayed loading. This uh, was the clinical and x-ray situation after one year, but I can show you the clinical situation and the radiological situation after 10 years. So the question is, in sinus class three, with a CM fixation, could we insert immediately uh, the healing screw or the provisional? About the healing screw, we have no doubt now, because we can use this very important and interesting tools. I know that uh, you are familiar with any check, so I don't want to explain it, but if you have more than 70, 65 
EIST, you can load or you can put the healing screw over your implant inserted into the sinus. So let me show you one clinical case. We need to insert a two implant in the molar area. Uh, we have more or less four to five millimeter of residual height of bone. So this is the surgery, the implant inserted, and the healing screw inserted over the implant. We have to decide. We can leave the healing screw or we have to submerge. We, I use at that time the any check and any check value, mean value, were between 70 and 72, so it was good for this clinical case to insert without any problem the healing screw. But as I told you at uh, the initial part of the lecture, my goal is to insert an immediate restoration. So we can do the same if we have planned for an immediate restoration. So we insert the implant, we insert the healing screw. I use any check, in this case, very good value, 82 IST. So I decide to perform a provisional restoration and then the final crown when we had the healing of the soft and hard tissue. Could we do post-abstractive implant in sinus class three? Yes, we can. We can use the bone septum with between the radix, between the root of a molar, for example. And in a case like this, it is better not to do an immediate restoration because this is the last tooth of, uh, of the mouth in this area. So I prefer not to run any risk. We are on the way of 100% success, so don't take risk. Don't take risk, it's better to protect your patient. So you extract in a very gentle way uh, the, the roots and you can insert the implant, into the, the implant into the septum, checking again with any check if it's possible to insert immediately the healing screw or not. The value was 72 after the sinus elevation, so I put the healing screw, and this was the clinical situation and the radiological situation just after the sinus elevation and just after the insertion of the healing screw. And now, sinus class four. Sinus class four is the worst area of, uh, of is the worst situation for the, um, the sinus is the worst situation to master any time loading or immediate loading. We have from one to three millimeter of bone left. Normally, uh, once upon a time, I have been treating these cases with a lateral approach. But now I prefer to do always sinus crestal approach because it's more comfortable for the patient and uh, it's easier, uh, less expensive for your office. So we have a lot of advantages to do this. And I prefer when I have at least one or two millimeter to perform a crystal elevation. The problem is, is that if you have only two millimeter, like in this case, you cannot perform an immediate loading or any time loading. Or you can, because <clears throat> It is better to say that you can if you want to, to be very courageous. But if you want to have 100% success, my suggestion is to perform a delayed loading of a implant in those cases. So this was the final crown. Very interesting to see that here we have a new sinus floor. You can see that we have increase of seven, eight millimeter, more or less, the dimension of uh, the residual crystal width, uh, height. So in this situation, please go with a delayed loading. Also, <clears throat> for the healing screw, when you have a situation like this with two millimeter here on the left of the patient, here you have more, you have three, three and a half millimeter, 
but <clears throat> I think it's better not to, to run any risk and uh, it is better to, to do, in those cases, a delayed loading to prevent failure and uh, in success for us and for the patient. So <clears throat> we wait six months after the surgery and then we perform the final crown. So let me introduce to you the book that uh, me and Marco has published uh, last year about the sinus crestal elevation. All the cases that you have seen today are present in the book and we hope that the next year will be translated in, a ling in, uh, in English. And uh, now the final guidelines. So if we have a sinus class one, CMI fixation, please keep attention because uh, it, might, uh, it might be a simple case or it might be a very complex case if you have D44 quality, bone quality. So please don't think that it is, this is the best situation for the anytime loading. The sinus class two CMI situation is probably the best situation for immediate loading for any time loading, you can do immediate function, post-extractive implant, immediate healing screw. And the same I, I can say for sinus class three, but always check implant stability and always check bone quality in position C and M. Because if you have very low bone quality, very low insertion torque, it is better uh, to perform also in sinus class 3 CM fixation a delayed loading. But if you are in an ideal situation, you can perform uh, a post-extractive implant, an immediate function, an immediate healing screw if you have more than 70 as a value of EST. In sinus class 4, if you want to go on on the road, of, on, on the Silk Road to 100% success, please do a delayed loading if you want to be sure. You work probably in a private practice, not in university. You don't need to make any research. Let the other people who has to do this to make the research. So I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Here you can find my social my family that uh, is here with me. And uh, if you have uh, any question, uh. you can contact me anytime.